The greatness that is Warriors basketball continues tonight when the Warriors are on the road playing the Mavericks. Dieter, are you ready to go, my man? Let's make it happen, Captain. All right, let's do this. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms. Dieter Kurdenbach, myself, Cyrus Sotsas. You can follow Dieter on Twitter, at Dieter. You can follow me on Twitter, at Dog Surf Rocho. First things first, let's recap uh, yet another successful night of Warriors basketball. Mm -hmm. Uh, Their victim were the Miami Heat, who were (laughs) kindly, not kindly, sort of uh, shorthanded. What were your... Uh, what's your recap on that? What's your take from another Warriors victory? As I said on last night's show, it, it was perhaps the most comprehensive victory in terms of uh, confirming how good this overall team is. Obviously, Steph Curry had nine points. And while he did have 10 assists, and it's not to say that Steph Curry was like abysmal or anything like that. He was positively affecting the game. Um, for the Warriors to come through the way that they came through, Jordan Poole coming through with 32 points. Great offense all around with 39 assists. Draymond Green, Andrew Wiggins getting in on the action. Just everybody chipping in in great defense, particularly down the stretch. I, I, I'm, out, I'm out of questions. I'm out of questions for this <laughs> team, Cyrus. Like, they're really, really good. I don't know if they're, like, elite at, at mm-hmm. a tremendous amount of things, but they're, like, hyper-competent at, like, damn near everything. I, I, I'm just... I'm flabbergasted by how good this basketball team is and uh, a team (laughs) can win a a lot of games when a superstar doesn't come through. No, you're absolutely right. And first off, I do want to apologize again. Mentally, I'm not at uh, my my optimal level. You hosted a show yesterday, uh, probably talking about the Heat game already. (laughs) So I do sincerely apologize for bringing that up again. Um, But you make a great point, which is that the Warriors are at the apex of success right now. But let me ask you this, man. And and, and I Mm -hmm. love hearing from the national media just to get a different perspective as opposed to what the local media is saying. Um, Do you feel like, and and based on what they're talking about and what everyone's talking about, do you feel like this Warriors team is an anomaly? Because they don't Mm -hmm. resemble a traditional superpower team, but they are the best. Like Uh, Yeah. Anomaly is anomaly strong, but it is an interesting term, right? Like there is another team. I suppose that they are an anomaly in the sense that they're a legitimate championship contender. I don't think anyone is questioning this team's ability to win a title, whereas most teams that are sort of structured in a very similar way to the Warriors, even with a superstar like Steph Curry, even with perhaps three all-stars on this team, which should not be overlooked, like the teams that are structured like this, Denver, Utah, you know, teams that, that win with depth, uh, though Denver not so much this year. Miami <laughs> right. teams teams that are just competent organizations, sort of taking the mantle from the Spurs, though they'll never reach even close to the same heights. Just uh, a, a tough out every night. Those sort of teams, which the Warriors absolutely are, as they proved against the Miami Heat. Um, right. Those teams don't win championships. They might get to you know a Mickey Mouse bubble NBA Finals, or they might make a Western Conference Finals. But typically, you need superstars and probably two or three of them to to win a title. Uh, This Warriors team has won. We can have a conversation about Draymond Green. I don't know if national people are are ready for that conversation. Certainly people who love the game of basketball understand Draymond Green's impact. We can certainly argue if Andrew Wiggins is an all-star or not. I think that anybody who's watched this Warriors team day in and day out would agree that he certainly deserves serious consideration and probably makes it just given the way that the, the world is going right now. But hopefully that's not the case in a couple of weeks. Um, but, uh, <laughs> though, you know, sadly for Andrew Wiggins in that scenario, they, they're just, they're, they're melding the two. Um, you know, they're not the Nets. They don't have, you know, three dudes like that. They have one dude like that. And right. by the way, Steph Curry has been incredible in the clutch as of late, one of the best clutch performers in the league up there with DeMar DeRozan over the last two months or so, which is really saying something considering how often DeMar DeRozan is ending games with his shots. Um, 
that answered kind of my biggest question about the Warriors. Steph is, is exploring the mid-range more in clutch situations. They're getting more shooting out on the floor. The defense remains next level. Uh, this is a very good clutch team. Uh, is it as good as the Suns? I mean, you'd have to say yes, given what we saw on Christmas Day. And the Suns are arguably the best uh, crunch time team in the league because of Chris Paul and Devin Booker and not to mention DeAndre Ayton. But they're kind of melding the two options. They have that superstar. They have that dude who they want the ball in the hands of in crunch time, um, maybe two, maybe three. Again, <laughs> we're, we're reverting back to that prior prior point. But um, they also have that depth to where, yes, uh, the team is not as good when Steph Curry is not on the floor. No duh, but they're not drowning. <laughs> they're not underwater, no. right? Like this is a team that is slightly competent, like a 500 basketball team without Steph and Curry, if you kind of extrapolated out some of the numbers over the course of a season. And then with Steph and Curry – they're really, really, really hard to beat. And I, again, I'm just, I'm struggling. I'm struggling to find a reason to fade the Warriors. You know, you always have to have that in the back of your head. Like, how's this going to go wrong? What is the this team's Achilles heel? What Where is the problem? I, I'm really struggling. I mean, they could lose. They, they could. Uh, seven game series, injuries, foul trouble. I, I, I'm just, I'm really scratching uh, now that this clutch thing has been figured out about where this team's weakness is. They're really damn good. You're absolutely right. Um, I want to share my screen again because I'm starting to love this feature on YouTube and we'll obviously uh, verbalize everything for the podcast audience here. Right. Um, this is uh, this is Andrew Wiggins. Um, it, it's a comment that he made and and I'm sharing a, a screen from Twitter. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, world Where Wiggins came out, a, a, a quote, he said, quote, we're winning, we're everyone pushes each other i'm around greatness bf being around bob being around steph uh i said uh, steph the first time he met steve uh draymond well, you, i you meant need, steve you need to mention steph t twice to be fair i mean when you're around <laughs> yeah. steph it, it really does make an impact absolutely and he mentions draymond green clay i mean i mean you could go on and on with this quote and again it, it got this from a uh, warriors world mm -hmm. uh their twitter account and, and it continues it was a, it was a long attribution um where basically Basically, uh, Wiggins rattle off more names, but he basically made a, a, a correlation between Minnesota and Golden State in that in Minnesota, he felt like he was scoring a lot, a lot there. Um, he was contributing a lot there. Nobody noticed. He might not be putting up the same points there, but Wiggins is just stoked on the, the fact that even though he's giving 18, 19, 20 a game, um, recognized, and this time he's winning, and, and you're seeing enthusiasm from him you know you wrote a column uh, a, a couple months back about the Warriors needing a mid-range shooter in order to be uh, a world champion about needing that consistent score for the easy baskets down the stretch of a tight series late in the playoffs um, is that still a concern for you and in your opinion who do you think are the biggest threats to the Warriors right now well it, it's still a concern in the sense that we're having a nice little blip right now as we watch the Warriors and they're doing better. And I think that they have figured out some stuff. And, and I mentioned it a little bit earlier amongst the rambling that like Curry, and by the way, we should mention that I believe those uh, quotes from Wiggins are from Baxter Holmes's article today on ESPN. So we'll thank make you sure that that attribution is gotten out there. Warriors world. Uh, no, we don't know, but um, <laughs> no, it was good. It was it was a really impressive uh, impressive profile on Andrew Wiggins, and we we do recommend everyone go read it because um, some great quotes from Kevin Durant or seven, sorry from uh, Kevin Garnett, who is a, a pretty good trash talker in his day and, and was Heck a former yeah. teammate of Andrew Wiggins. So uh, you know the Hall of Famer, he might have something to say. But, well, they uh, played together for a brief moment when when Garnett yeah, went back. He, yeah, okay. I remember that like really sad year. I did. <laughs> I do, I do. Um, well, uh, you know, they had him as like a player coach with, with Flip Saunders as the yes. coach, and it was just kind of a hot mess. But uh, you know, Garnett, Garnett has an incredible ability to sort of see into people's souls, and uh, what he saw in Andrew Wiggins, he liked, and he he's wanted more. And you know, we heard it from Andre Guadala earlier this season that you know we talked to Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler's literally a no, like a no BS guy whatsoever. Jimmy right. Butler is like all about the work. He is like hardcore to the point of being corny, and he's like, I love, I love Andrew Wiggins. And yeah, 
What stood out to me in Monday's game with Wiggins wasn't anything they did on the floor, which has just been marvelous, and he's taken it to an entire other level from that other level that he was on, and there's maybe another level after that. Um, the, the talent fountain is just overflowing right now with Andrew Wiggins and his athleticism it is off the charts, which we knew, but it's being actualized more. But what stood out to me in the post game was just how like happy he was and how yeah. big he was. And uh, it's certainly a stark contrast from his season uh, or preseason press conference with the vaccine stuff. Uh, it's certainly <laughs> a, a departure from Andrew Wiggins that I think first showed up here. In Golden State, I mean, I, I think he is uh, really, really enjoying his his style of basketball, the way he's playing basketball. And listen, there's nothing to complain about with Andrew Wiggins on the floor right now, which is not something I legitimately thought we would ever say. But to, to answer your question, uh, before <laughs> uh, it, because Steph is exploring that mid range more often, it opens up so much. Like if you're bringing yeah. two or three defenders into the paint, congratulations, Otto Porter, you get. 10 feet of wide open space on the on the perimeter and uh so long as Steph can continue to do that and I, I have a hard time uh and so long as Draymond in conjunction remains aggressive really aggressive and I, right. I believe both of those things will uh, remain to be the case this team is going to have Porter this team is going to have you know mm. pool this team is mm. going to have Clay Thompson uh, hanging out on the wing and just saying, I would like the ball, please, and no one's going to be there to guard him. I'll take those offensive possessions all day, every day, even if it isn't Kevin Durant rising up in the mid-range. To specifically answer your question, I think that we're going to get a, a very good indication of who the Warriors' best challenger is once Clay is back, and it's looking yes. like Clay is going to be back on uh, s- Sunday the 9th. They get a, a three-game stretch on the road. Memphis Milwaukee, Chicago. I don't think I'm a lifelong Bulls fan. It's not the Bulls. It's not <laughs> Memphis. No, Memphis might be a really interesting first round series that the Warriors would probably want to avoid just because of the, yes. the toll it would take. But yes. Milwaukee, Milwaukee's Milwaukee's coming. Milwaukee well, is we, really, really good. And, and I'm with you on that. I think Milwaukee is the biggest threat. When we come back uh, after paying. We're going to talk about, uh, obviously, Clay's return, which is tentatively right now. All the speculation indicates Sunday at home against the the Cleveland Cavaliers. Um, And then we're going to talk about the rotation. It's going to change. Uh, Andre Iguodala, I love that he said that uh, Jordan Poole is going to be the next $20 million sixth man. Um, You're right. Rings rings a lot of truth. Uh, But first, let's talk about one of our sponsors. And I love having sponsors that I genuinely support and agree with. It's true bill. Um, mm-hmm. Do you know why free trials renew without your consent? It's a business scam out to get you. Dieter, I don't know about you. Like, I, I think dude. I have two Netflix accounts out there. Yeah, go <laughs> dude. <laughs> uh, your, your boy popped on true bill the other day. And let me just tell you, I was getting got. I was getting really got by some people. Oh, man. Oh. It's, you know, $3 here, $4 there. You go into your iTunes. Oh, boy. Yeah, you, you can. You just stuff that you used once and you didn't realize you'd been paying for the entire time, man. But that's where True Bill comes in. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And and even like stuff like Amazon accidentally buys something and renews automatically. So you get it every two, three months. The point is True Bill is that new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you don't need, want, or simply forgot about. On average, people save up to two uh, up to seven hundred twenty dollars a year mm-hmm. with True Bill. And uh, because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel, uh, Drew Bill makes it incredibly simple. Uh, just link your accounts and True Bill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. So don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at truebill.com slash locked on NBA. Again, that's truebill.com slash locked on NBA. Go right now, truebill.com slash locked on NBA could save you thousands a year. That's truebill.com slash locked on NBA. You are locked on Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast. I was actually just on there the other night. Nightly recaps of every NBA game with analysis from our local experts. Listen to Locked On Now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or watch it on the Locked On NBA 
YouTube channel. Uh, so Clay Thompson, it's uh, all signs indicate it's the Cavaliers game, kind of apropos four straight in they played each other against the Cavaliers pretty good again um you know by the way it, I was looking at the schedule is it weird to you that the Warriors have this weird stretch on the road they come back for one home game hmm. and then they're right back on the road again and that one home game is the Cavaliers before I believe like a six or seven game road stretch um yeah. but Dieter well, what it, are you seeing Sunday oh sorry go ahead it's it's two it's two games on the road right uh Dallas and New Orleans right and then they come back for Cleveland so we'll have an indication post that New Orleans game if Clay is indeed coming back because there's a day there where they'll probably practice uh, right. a four-game roadie and then a seven-game homestand after that. So oh. even if Clay doesn't come back on the ninth, um, starting with Detroit on on the, the following Tuesday, Clay's back. Like, <laughs> they will okay. find a day for Mr. Yeah. Clay Thompson to be back because there are seven straight games where he could be on the floor, and uh, they're really nicely spaced out, and that culminates with a game against Brooklyn at Chase Center. So something to keep in mind oh, there. Uh, should be a very yeah. interesting January. You also have, uh, you know, you have Utah coming to town on uh, on a Sunday not too long from now. So it might be a big Bay Area sports day with the 49ers oh. and and uh, and of course the Utah Jazz coming to play the Golden State Warriors. It's the good stuff. What are we hearing about Clay? Everything points to to Cleveland. Um, it might not happen. Yeah. I mean, I'm just right. <laughs> just it might not happen. I mean, he's still got to get cleared. Uh, the conditioning's got to be there. I don't think the Warriors are hyper focused on it right now. Like, I don't think it's priority number one. It becomes priority number one the second that game against the Pelicans is over, and they'll have to make a determination one way or another. But uh, again, it, it is looming. If it's not Cleveland on the ninth, it's Detroit the following week, or you know, any of the seven games following that or six games following that it, 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 he's coming and yeah when he comes there are going to be some real minutes crunch stuff even if he's just playing five to ten minutes a game to start he's starting he's starting he's in the lineup so yeah they're gonna have to figure out some pretty seriously new rotations and while i don't think that's going to be a problem it might be a little funky for a while well what do you how, what do you see with that because obviously the starting five is you're going to see play replace jordan pool mm -hmm. um but that second or unit is second become, now <laughs> yeah and but that second unit suddenly becomes that much more lethal i mean this is easily mm -hmm. in my opinion this the best second unit in the nba like like what do you see, i mean are you seeing any major changes from this is it is it uh gonna be subtle like like i, I what do you see it's when gonna take like, a, I, I think that the biggest thing is it's gonna take a minute right like it, it, clay thompson isn't gonna come back and they're not gonna throw him out there for 30 minutes a game and i think that there's probably gonna be a limitation of how much they're willing to play clay every game uh pretty much up until the playoffs and they're going to really take it slow again we're not talking one injury we're talking two and while everything points to clay looking totally totally awesome it's also two really bad ones like an acl is not good uh you lose a bit of your bounce not that clay's game has ever been predicated on bounce but like right you don't just come back from an acl looking better and the achilles one i mean it's incredible what modern medicine is doing and certainly you can look at kevin durant and yes. say what's the problem or rudy gay and say what's the problem but the warriors aren't interested in finding out what that problem could be and they don't have to right like that's the best right. part they don't need clay thompson they can win a title without clay thompson crazy I, I firmly i firmly crazy. believe that uh but they go from a team that could win a title to the team that should win the title in my estimation if clay thompson is anything close to the clay thompson we saw in the 2019 NBA Finals before he oh. tore his ACL. So, it, listen, I think that he'll play 10 to 15 minutes to start. I think it will be starting lineup, probably start of the third quarter. That's about it. Uh, those are his, you know, seven minutes a spot, five minutes a spot. The, that's his rotation. And then we'll get, right. you know, we'll get closing the second quarter. And then we'll add in, you know, maybe working with the second unit a little bit here. But, um, it, you know, there's, there's always this conversation in the NBA, and, and anytime I ask people that I really trust about this stuff, I get the same answer to the point where I don't even ask anymore, which is <laughs> these things generally take care of themselves. As much as it's, yeah. it's crappy to admit, like Andre Guadala is going to take another five games off because like Andre Guadala is going to play like 25 games this year. That's just part of his contract. He's working on the minimum. That's fine. And he's like, no, I'll see you in the playoffs. That's what you're paying me for. Uh, I get that playoff bonus. Uh, I'm here for rings. 
Uh, you, know, you, you, you can you can play Jonathan Kaminga some. You can play him none. You don't have to figure out Moses Moody. You know you want to play Gary Payton the second a bunch, but you can feel that out per day. I think that the one spot that's locked in that we can say with certainty with Clay in the lineup again, and maybe maybe I'll, I'll ask around about this. Maybe this changes, but Jordan Poole is going to be the first guy off the bench. And Jordan uh-huh. Poole is going to be the guy that they are going to ask to carry that second unit. And, you know, you think back to the 2015, 20, or 2014, 2015, 2016 Warriors, um, Clay was that guy. Clay was the sort of anchor of the second unit. And it was a little funny. Yep. It wasn't always that awesome. Uh, Clay is a, a secondary player. Now, he can score as well as anybody in the league, but Clay doesn't create off the dribble. So, not having that guy with a second unit. It's nice to have a Sean Livingston. It's nice to have an Andre Guadal. It's nice to have those dudes. But uh, typically, if you're running a second unit, I want a dude who is either just sort of the typical, you know, TJ McConnell point guard that runs a second unit, distributes the ball, you get the space, you do the high pick and roll thing. Or I want a a combo guard. And Jordan Poole, I think, is, is, you know, for, for, there's, you know, some stuff you can nitpick about his game, but that dude can score in bunches, he can score off the dribble. He's confident as all hell. He's got a lot of like a Jordan Clarkson in him. And Jordan Clarkson's as good of a six man as there is in the NBA. And Jordan Poole's a baby. So like I, I, I really feel like he is well suited to that role. And he's gonna close some games and, and he'll close no, I some agree. second halves. But um my goodness, like uh, that if that's the one thing that's sort of locked in and everything else will just sort of figure itself out because it's all very nebulous, including closing lineups. Like Jordan Poole's a six man makes all the sense in the world, right? Absolutely. And when you look at that second lineup, the, I feel like the only thing missing from Jordan Poole's game, and, and I think it's going to come, is consistency. Um, totally. He still has those off nights here and there, but that's going to come. When you look at the second unit, and, and the way I see it is you're going to have Jordan Poole, I love that metaphor, by the way, you made with the 2014 through 16 team where Clay Thompson kind of staggered with Steph yeah, to maintain that offensive threat. they just run those Iverson cuts. They'd run the Iverson yeah. cuts with Clay all the time, and it's like, yeah, you know, they figured it out come playoff time. And then yeah, they and, had but to they, scramble. But, but they had, I think, and he was mm-hmm. a point guard for that second unit back then. And mm-hmm. so what they have now is you have Jordan Poole coming in the second unit, Andre Iguodala, mm-hmm. Otto Porter Jr., Gary Payton the skin, mm-hmm. uh, and then Bielitsa. I love yeah. that second unit. And you can mess with that. Like you said, totally. Kaminga could maybe come in for a little bit. Uh, I don't think Moody's ready for the for this uh, the, the limelight. I, but uh, I, Honestly, if I had one complaint about this Warriors team right now, it's that I don't – and I get why it's really difficult. This is a, a true deep nitpick. I mean, we are spending hours finding anything <laughs> yeah. here. But I would, we I have would to. like yep. to see a little bit more run for, for Moses Moody. I think that they've done an exceptional job – so far in handling Jonathan Kaminga. And Jonathan Kaminga has earned everything that he's gotten, too. I mean, it's evident yes, he he's has. on the floor. And it helps to be a, a hyper, hyper, hyper 1% athlete. But um, I, I, would love to, I would love to see Moses Moody just get some spot minutes here and there a little bit more frequently. I know he was out with COVID. I, I think Steve gave it a little bit of a go, uh, not, you know, not long before he had COVID, but... Uh, I'd like to see that get back in the rotation. But again, these are things that, that typically, I know that this is a priority for the Warriors, that they're trying to make it happen. They're just looking for the yeah. right spot. They don't want to put him in a position to fail. He is a kid. He has this very polished game that can obviously expand, but he's sort of you know very controlled in his, his uh, in very understanding of his own skill set at this point, but he's 19 years old. So Absolutely. Um, yeah, I know that Steve and the Warriors coaches are, are very interested in making that happen. It is a priority for them. They just haven't found the right spot. That's the one nitpicky thing. So yeah, maybe, and you have maybe to, when Clay comes back, it breaks it up a little bit, and they can find those minutes for him. And when the Warriors are this good, that's all you can do is nitpick. And and, and it's so easy to forget other names like Juan Toscano Anderson and Deacon uh-huh. Lee, both of whom have been contributing tremendously this year. That's just how deep this team is. When we come back, right. uh, we're going to preview the Warriors Mavericks game. Um, but first, let's talk about Built Bar. Uh, I still haven't had one yet, Dieter. Uh, I, Go I'm, to the I'm, damn store and get a Built Bar. I know. Bar. I, delightful. I know. I think. I <laughs> think it's it is the new year, uh, so that means New Year's resolutions. If yours is about getting fit or eating healthier, make sure you include Build oh, Bar yeah. in your plan. Absolutely. Are do you, are you a New Year's resolutions guy? By the way, or is that no, something? I hate, you... I hate New Year's resolutions, Same. but I passively do them anyway. 
<laughs> I'm with you. So, so Bill, so for those of you whose New Year's resolution is losing weight, getting healthier, Built Bar is that protein bar. It tastes like a candy bar, but it's healthy. It tastes so good you want to eat it, unlike other protein bars which can be chalky or waxy or taste like a chemical spill. Oh, you yeah. want to eat healthy in 2022, but it gets boring. But like week three, you might be thinking, this is just not worth it. Where's the mm -hmm. chocolate? Especially if you got that sweet tooth. Well, Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. Most Built Bars contain just 130 calories, only four grams of sugar, only four net carbs with 17 grams of protein. Compare that to a candy bar, which usually has nearly double the calories, nearly eight times the sugar, and dozens of net carbs. Here's an idea for the new year. Go to all your secret treat stashes at home, in the pantry, at the office, in the car, wherever they are. Mm -hmm. Throw all those sugary, nasty treats out and replace them with Built Bar. Go to Built.com. Use promo code uh, LOCK15 and get 15% off your order. Again, that is LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. Um, and this show is also brought to you by a very sponsor, Bet On Bet Online. Would like to wish you a happy new betting year as we continue our march to the playoffs and beyond. Uh, Bet Online remains the number one spot for all the best sports wagering action for 2022. It's a new year and a new updated desktop and mobile desk mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50 percent welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code LAWN for 50 percent. In addition to what you deposit from football, basketball, hockey, boxing, UFC, right to your favorite Vegas games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for 2022. BetOnline.ag is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports. That's BetOnline.ag, where the game starts. <laughs> On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Warriors every day. We're free and available on all platforms. Dieter, the Warriors play the Dallas Mavericks tonight. Luka Doncic uh, came back for the first time, uh, their last game after missing 10 games previously. Mm -hmm. uh, the the, the Corn is out because of health, health and safety protocols. Seven three giant out there will not be playing the Warriors. No. Um, have you done some research on the game? What are your thoughts? I, I just find Dallas to be such a confusing team in general. I yes. think a lot of that has to do with Jason Kidd being their head coach. And uh, here, here's a newsflash: he's not very good at it. <laughs> but um, it, the, Luca, Luca has obviously been hurt by the new rule changes. I think perhaps even more so. Interesting. Than, uh, than James Harden. Um, there's just a disjointedness that sort of always existed with a ball dominant player in the way that Luca has been, you know, in his NBA career. And now that's kind of gone to a whole new level. So mm -hmm. uh, interested to see how the Warriors handle it defensively. He can still do crazy Luca stuff, which is just crazy James Harden stuff in, in a different package. Yeah, um, that's true. Good analogy. And, I never really heard that before, but that's true. Yeah, it's, it's the same. He's a Harden. Game. He's yeah, hard. they're both chubby. Hard. They're both they both yeah, they both got that that big barrel <laughs> chest, and they're willing to throw it around a little bit. And they're both uh, just epic complainers to the referees. So, um, the Slovenian Harden is going to get his. Uh, the question is, can they? The Warriors, and this has been the question every time they've played, um, can they stop Tim Hardaway Jr.? Can they stop? He you know, always lights it up Dwight, against the Warriors. Always. Here's the name, Dwight Powell. I don't know if he's playing tonight, but if he is playing tonight, I can guarantee that he's going to have his best game of the last couple of weeks because he always does that against the Warriors, not to turn full. And Harvey Jr. Hardaway and Harvey Jr. Jr. They, those are the guys. They who, some... Those are the guys. Those are the guys you got to worry about. Let Luca have 50. It doesn't matter. I don't care if Porzingis plays or not. Obviously, he's not playing, but like I don't care because Porzingis right. does not affect the game in any positive way or really negative way. Even when he's on his best, it's like, bleh. I don't know how you can be 7-3 and all that skill and, and be so unimportant, but here we are. <laughs> um, it's, 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 you know, a, a Jalen Brunson, it's a Tim Hardaway Jr., it, yeah. it's a Dwight Powell. Uh, I haven't checked the, the full roster, but, you, you, you know, just play, if the Warriors play their style, they're five-and-a-half-point favorites, I would expect them to cover easily, and, and you probably still get that line on betonline.ag. 
There you go. And I, I love, I love, I absolutely love that, that, uh, uh, that reference there, the comparison between uh, James Harden and Luca, because their styles are similar. I feel like it's a massive insult to Luca, but at the same time, at this point in his career, I expect more. Game. And, and yeah. that's his game. You're right. Um, and, and to me for the Mavericks and started to talk about them so much, but they made to, to this day, I still feel like they made a colossal mistake trading Seth Curry uh, for Josh mm -hmm. Richardson because uh, mm -hmm. for that one year, they that like Luca had someone else who could take attention away and create space for him, and, and they don't, they still don't have that. And create um, off the dribble a little bit. Josh Richardson um, is a nice defender. I think that that was what they were going for, but that was a that was a Carlisle move. And, and I guess I I, I just I, I have so little respect for Jason Kidd, the ba uh, basketball coach. It's <laughs> of course it didn't work. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Before we end the show, I want to share uh, some really crazy facts you know I, i'm not a big instagram guy but i go on there once in a while because people post amazing with fascinating stats it's a good escape from reality um like it increases your uh, intellectual action but it entertains <laughs> sure. and um so i wanted to share this uh these facts and let me let me change so that for the youtube viewers they can see it and we'll read this out loud for everyone else um first things first crazy you uh steph curry had missed his next 500 three-pointers <laughs> and still have a higher three-point percentage than ray allen that's, that's insane that's bonkers ben simmons missed more free throws in the playoffs just as last year than steve nash has his entire postseason career uh this this wow. makes it a little misleading it looks like it's all of steve nash's misses but no it's postseason yeah. Devin Booker did. He never started a game when he played at Kentucky. I knew that one. Yeah. Yeah, I, I did you too, actually. like that. Yeah. There are. Um, Russell Westbrook has the worst three-point percentage in NBA history based on number of – on, on compared to others who have a similar shot total than him. I had to look this one up, but it's true. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it does not surprising, but yeah, still kind of crazy. I, I've, I've watched Russell Westbrook play basketball. I would, I would have guessed that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kawhi Leonard has more finals MVPs than triple double. That's crazy. Two. That is crazy. I, 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 guess, I don't pass. know if he doesn't pass much. Does not pass. He doesn't pass. He doesn't pass. Uh, no NB. This is a weird one. No NB team has the left anywhere in their name. Well, that's really just bizarre. A, that's just a. Uh, I would have never thought about it in, <laughs> in the first place. <laughs> uh, and uh, Stockton would still be the all time leader an assist even if he missed the last six seasons of his career the that that might his career his his assist record will probably last forever would you agree with that like i don't yeah, see anyone hard to hard to argue that it wouldn't in that sense uh <laughs> if if i mean that's steph curry stuff right there that is and last but not least chauncey billups the head coach of the portland trailblazers the only player with a winning record against lebron kobe and jordan i, I knew that one as well i'm sure that's you did too one, yeah. um but those are just some yeah, those are some, some crazy stats for you. All right, Dieter, you're uh, you're hosting tomorrow, yeah. uh, and then I'll be taking the the the, the helm on Friday. Uh, anything to preview for tomorrow's show? Well, we'll talk about the Dallas game, and we'll preview the Pelicans game. It's all pretty straightforward from here. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's it right there. Thanks for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. Uh, now make your second listen Locked On Bets, your daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. Locked On Bets, hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. It's free and available on all platforms. It's always a pleasure. You can follow Dieter Kurtenbach on Twitter at Dieter. It's super simple and easy. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Dog Surf Roadshow and this program on Twitter at Locked on Dubs. Um, anything else you want to promote? I mean, you're no. on KNBR pretty much, right? Let's, just, uh, let's get the hell up out of here. That's all I want to promote. <laughs> all right, take care, everyone. Later.